Okay, we came to the next speaker. This is uh, Oliver Huxdorf. He is from project. He's project manager at Invent GmbH, and yeah, please. And he talks about thermally expanding particles uh, for a damage-free separation of bonded FRP parts. So, the stage is yours. Thank you very much for your introduction. Um, Welcome, everybody, to my presentation today. My name is Oliver Hochstorff. I am a project manager at the Invent GmbH in Braunschweig. I think not everybody of you knows who we are, what, are we, uh, what is our focus in our company. So, therefore, I want to also present our company. But please don't panic. I provided only two um, yeah, slides, and then we go more to detail. Okay, uh, the title of my presentation today is Thermally Expanding Particles for Damage-Free Separation of Bonded FRP Parts. Okay, first of all, some information about our company, as I said. Um, we are a spin-off from the DLR, especially from the, compos uh, from the Institute of Composite Structures and, oh, thank you, Composite Structures and Electronics, and yeah, we are a spinner from uh, in, in 1996, and we are a company with close to 100 um, employees. And yeah, we are specialists for composite structures. And on the right side, you can see our um, value chain. And as you can see, we have a, a three uh, business units. The first one is space, the second one aviation, third one industry. And around this circle, you can see our, our, our uh, our competences, and as you can see, we are able to do your uh, concept studies. We can do uh, material qualifications, especially for for aviation and space. We can also do uh, design and structural analysis uh, using the tools Ensys and Nestran. We can also manufacture the prototypes and also uh, serious productions or serious products, and they yeah, are able to do the quality. Management And as you can see, we have uh, different technologies in-house, for example, infuse, infusion, injection, pre te pre technology, winding. We can also assemble uh, small and big structures. Um, we have a big machine park, for example, milling machines, uh, uh, turning, uh, and so on. We have, we have presses, a lot of special processes, and as well, as the painting for the structures. And yeah, here's some examples of our products. On the left side, um, some examples from the space. And as you can see, the, the, the small picture here, this one, there you can see our seeker, which is, which is a, yeah, quite interesting um, technology, completely made of uh, carbon fibers. And the, it's, it's yeah, the, the interesting point of this structure is that the thermal expansion uh, co uh, coefficient is zero, which is really necessary for um, or helpful for space applications because if you have a panel, a solar panel, or something like this, then you have a, a relative high temperature gradient uh, over the thickness of the structure, and therefore it's necessary to have a thermal expansion close to zero. Um, Maybe some examples from aviation. We are responsible for some serious products from, uh, for Airbus, especially for the A320. And um, we are responsible for a serious production for the uh, body parts of the shown helicopter there. And yeah, some other structures like uh, waste tanks, freshwater tanks for aviation application, and so on. The last one, the industry. Um, on the left picture, you can see the Dewar Act. Um, uh, uh, the uh, piezo ceramic, uh, which is manufactured manufactured in a serious production with the dual technology, and yeah, you can use it as an actuator sensor. If you have further questions, you can uh, visit us for uh, at our exhibition, and yeah, some other structures you can see an optical bench. That's uh, the the middle structure. It's a uh, 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 structure for. Uh, for the biggest um, mirror telescope in the world, which is located in, the, uh, in Arizona at Mount Graham. And this structure is able to position 
the, the camera with a preci precision of 0 0.01 millimeters. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice structure. Yeah, but now let's start with a, a presentation or with a, with a um, content. Um, yeah. The technology, the TEP technology, um, is a result of an, um, uh, one result of a big um, researching project which was funded by the European U Union and the, big or the overall objective was the, the increase of the profitability of fiber composite structures due to recycling and reuse. Yeah, the, the, um, it was a consortium uh, with 20 partners from seven countries and we had three different use cases um, yeah, and the TEPs are the result of the third use case, which has the title Inspection, Repair and Remanufacturing for End-of-Life CFRP products and high-tech applications. Of course, the reuse um, is not uh, in, in this uh, title, but it's a big um, topic in our, or was a big topic in our activities. And yeah, as you uh, uh, read, we focused on CFRP structures. Why? We want to, uh, why we focused on CFRP structures? Because CFRP is one of the best materials to design and manufacture ultra lightweight um, structures. I think most of you know it. Yeah, the reason is that um, the specific strength as well as the specific stiffness is quite high compared with other um, material classes as well as the uh, fatigue behavior, which you can see uh, in a small uh, diagram on the right side. And, yeah, it has also some nice effects like lower corrosion, um, and therefore it's a, it's, it's a key material in order to design ultra lightweight structures. But we have one big problem, one or two big problems. Um, one problem is it's quite expensive to manufacture these um, structures. You need a lot of energy, and yeah, that's why you have a lot of costs and Carbon, uh, the carbon footprint is not so nice, so that's why we think about um, what's with reuse of CFRP structures. And yeah, one main question you, you will have is, um, of course, you can reuse uh, CFRP structures if you connect it with maybe screws, nuts, but this is not the optimal strategy to, to assemble them. A better strategy is uh, bonding, but yeah, the separation of bonded parts, sometimes it's critical because it's not damage-free and yeah, it's, it's yeah, also expensive and complicated and that's why we um, developed a new technology which is called the TEP technology. Now I have a blue screen. <laughs> I have the slides here on my paper but uh, I think you can't see it, so. Maybe questions on the, at this point? No? Okay. My microphone? Needs to hear. Sorry? Could you? Okay. Yeah, uh, we have a, sh uh, a technical problem. Uh, we need one minute. So, uh, what is this in your hand? Uh, yeah, this is a structure <laughs> I want to present you in the last it slides. It's, uh, it's one of the results. So you have, it's a big, yeah, it's, it's a profile for a new innovative seat for uh, automotive applications. And here at the end, you have a, a corner element with, um, which is made of uh, BMC. Oh, the yeah. presentation is back. Then I will come to the structure at the end. Yes, but not on the full screen. Ah, okay, you are waiting. Oh, and yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Okay. TEP technology. What are TEPs? TEPs are thermoplastic particles with an enclosed gas. And if you um, heat these particles, they um, enlarge their diameter, as you can see on the white side. And if you mix these particles into an adhesive, you have the possibility to, to heat the adhesive, and then you can destroy the whole uh, interface that you can separate the, the bonded parts by hand. So it's not necessary, necessary to use um, machines, therefore. So yeah, that's the idea. And depending on the concentration of your TEPs within the adhesive layer, you can control the, we say, uh, activation temperature. So the activation temperature um, is between 80 and 120 degrees. And yeah, depending on the concentration, you can control it a little bit. And this um, has a, the result that you, that you can um, yeah, adjust the adhesive on your uh, system corresponding to, to the requirements of your system. And yeah, in order to, to, to heat the structure, you can, you have, can use different um, ways. For example, an oven, inductive technology, microwaves, and so on. Yeah, and the big benefit is that the TEPs um, has a possibility for a fast and specific debonding. It's not necessary to, to heat the whole structure. You can uh, heat it only in a small location if you want. Um, it's damage free, of course. Um, you have some, some rests at your, at your surfaces, uh, you, uh, which means that you, that you need a surface treatment. But um, yeah, that's not a big problem. Um, yeah, and because of the damage free, uh, because uh, the, the parts are damage free after the separation, that uh, results in the uh, uh, possibility that you can reuse your structures without limits. And as a big result, you have uh, the reduction in costs and emissions. So here's some um, results of our uh, activities. Um, we try to characterize these technologies. And therefore, we identified um, the uh, single lab shear samples as a, a, a useful um, way to characterize them. Therefore, we used uh, the material co uh, combination aluminum and CFRP. And as an adhesive, we used epoxy, an epoxy-based um, adhesive, and as well as a polyurethane-based um, adhesive. And we investigated a lot of or different effects. The first one is the TEP concentration on the activation temperature, as I said some, slots, uh, some slides ago. The TEP concentration on the strength of the uh, connectivity the influence of surface, surface treatments on the strengths, the number of rebondings on the strengths, and the effect on different uh, adhesive types. And yeah, therefore we, we, we identified the, the, uh, the strategy, the procedure, which you can see on the right side. Um, we, we manufactured a lot of samples. One group of these samples we used directly to test them. The rest of the of these samples we used for uh, debonding, and then we we uh, clean the surfaces with uh, three different um, 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 processes. The first one was laser, the second one milling, and the third one the uh, grinding. And then we rebond the structures again. From this group, we uh, need some parts for direct testing, and then the rest of the parts we used for a third um, circle, and the results you can see on the diagram above. And um, yeah, the, the dark, uh, on the x axis you'll see the, uh, the, the, the um, surface treatment um, processes, laser, milling, grinding. The black or dark uh, bar is for, are the results for the first bonding. The gray um, bars are for the second bonding, and the blue bars for the third bonding. And on the y-axis, you can see the strengths. And as you can see, there is no essential decrease in the strengths of uh, the interface. So which means 
Um, you have no influence on your, on your um, CFRP part. Uh, you can reuse them without any limits. And yeah, but these are the, the results of the epoxy based adhesive, of course. We um, investigated the uh, polyurethane based um, adhesive. There you can see a, a decrease over the, the life cycles. Um, I think. Grinding is, is not acceptable for, 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 uh, for a surface treatment, but uh, laser is more or less acceptable. But what's, to be honest, what's the, 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 the effect between uh, polyurethane based or between this behavior and the behavior we saw uh, on the slide uh, before? Um, it's a little bit unknown. We have some theories, but um, I don't want to... to, to um, go more in detail because it's, it's not validated and yeah, we have some differences so which means that the, 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 it depends on the adhesive type. So, and the last one, of course, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, we thought about where we can use this technology. Um, we focused on automotive applications and yeah, to be honest, if you want to reuse um, body parts of a car, that's not acceptable over a lot of lifetimes because if you want to buy a car, you want to have a state-of-the-art design. Of course, if you are an old-timer fan, then it, it's okay if you have uh, older parts, but uh, for the most of us, I think we want to have a state-of-the-art design, So, and the design changes over the car generations. So, therefore, it makes no sense to, to focus on body parts, but if you focus on structures or, or parts which, are not, uh, which you cannot see, um, then you can, you can use this technology and therefore we identified the, the vehicle platform as well as uh, the seat, the seat structure, and therefore we uh, designed a new innovative seat stru structure. And yeah, here you can see this is one of the profiles uh, from, from the seat. The seat there has some uh, alum aluminum um, corner elements. This one here has a BMC, a corner element made of BMC, so recycled um, carbon fibers. And yeah, the, the design is that you can, after a lifetime of, of the seat or of the car, you can um, take the seat, separate all parts. Of course, it's necessary to check if, they, if the parts are okay. But this is also necessary for, for completely new manufactured parts. So that's not a big problem. And if the, 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 the parts are okay after the first life cycle, then you can reuse it. And yeah, you had a, as a result, over three lifetimes, lower costs, a better carbon footprint, and so on. Yeah, and the big or the overall conclusion is more or less the design and manufacturing of high quality composite parts for reuse applications as possible. So that is the message for today from my side. And yeah, if you have questions, ask. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Sorry for uh, no problem. the short problem we have. Um, yeah. There are any questions in the, from the audience? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wiedemann. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much for this interesting presentation. I mean, temperature seems to be a very sensitive parameter in yeah. this disassembly technology. And you mentioned 100 degrees. So, well, uh, not here in our country, but in some others, you may reach in, for standing applications already about 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, so the... <laughs> The car would disassemble by, by chance uh, under the sun heat. Uh, can you reach higher temperatures so that we are sure that we do not touch uh, operative temperatures for products? Under yeah, we have degrees or something like that. Um, we investigated um, other um, particles, of course, which are uh, useful for, for higher temperatures. But uh, to be honest, it's it's not my work. It's the work of a colleague of me. So. I can't go more in detail, but uh, there are. I think there is a possibility to to expand it a little bit. But I don't think it's necessary that that you can reach temperatures maybe like 180 degrees or something like this. So with these particles we used here, we are limited uh, between 80 and 120 degrees. 
Yeah, next question. <laughs> Another question. What is the additional weight that you carry with you for this feature? Can it's, you give some figures or some ideas? Um, I think it's, it's, oh, that's a good question. I think the additional weight, um, you have gas in, inside, so I think it's, it's lower than the original one. Of course, the, the thickness expands a little bit, but um, yeah, difficult to say. But I can give you the information afterwards if you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions? I think there are no other questions. Okay, then thank you. Thank you, you so very much. much. And maybe we will see us at our exhibition. So thank you very much. Thank you.